prayer of Ephesians. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Word of God, word of life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Be seated. So I'm really excited about our series that we kick off today called The God of Grace. And it's going to take us all the way up to Advent. So we're going to be in this for quite a while, all right, all the way up to the end of November. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at grace through the lens of the Old Testament. Now, am I safe to say that for many of us, we prefer the New Testament over Old Testament? Yeah, I see a lot of shaking hands. Yeah. So bear with me here, hold on, before you check out on me, all right, for the next several weeks. Here's the thing, I know, okay, I understand, I realize it. For many of us, it's hard to find grace in the Old Testament. And yeah, there's some stories, I'll let you know that right up front. There's some stories that are difficult, there are some stories that are hard to understand, there are some stories that you look at it and you read it and you go, what in the world is happening, Right? Um, all the way up to a talking donkey, right? How many of you knew there was a talking donkey in the, in the Bible? Y- y- there is, there is. You find it, let me know, okay? <laughs> but I was reading a book uh, a, about a month ago, and it reminded me of something that is very important, and that is that God's grace has been a part of God's story from the very beginning, right? Grace is not a New Testament idea. Grace didn't start with Jesus. But grace started at the very beginning. And from the very beginning, the story of God has been a story of grace. And so what we're going to do over the next several weeks is I'm going to try to hit some of the major stories of the Old Testament. It's not going to be exhaustive, but we're going to hit some major stories over the next several weeks. And what I want to show you is how grace is actually present in them. I want to cast the Old Testament stories in a new and different light for you. All right? And, And this will lead us all the way up to the prophet Isaiah and the prophecy about the Messiah which will lead us then into our Advent season. So it's going to play out really well, okay? So, does that sound all right? Does it sound like a plan? Too late. It's already written. Uh, <laughs> 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 all right? But no, seriously, stick with me. Let's look at this. Let's struggle, but also let's look at it through a different lens. Let's look at it through the lens of grace over the next couple of weeks, all right? So if that's what we're going to do today, here's what I want to do. Let's get a refresher on what grace is and what grace isn't, okay? Um, Let's talk about that for today before we jump into the Old Testament, all right? Because here's the deal. Churches love grace, all right? That is a word we throw around, okay? We just throw it out there like it's, it's the next best thing since sliced bread, right? I mean, churches, and and you know why? Because churches are more appealing when grace is more prevalent. (laughs) People people love it, right? And so what churches will do is they'll put, oh, we're we're we we're we're grace filled and we love grace and grace this and grace that, right? 
And let me tell you, you know what the first thing to go when it comes to the world of organized religion? Grace is usually the first casualty. And it happens when churches all of a sudden become focused inwardly. And when all of a sudden they begin to talk about what they're against rather than what they're for. And when they start to do that, grace is usually the first casualty in it. And so here's the thing about grace, right? What is it? Well, if you ask us in the Lutheran world, we're going to... We're going to point you to Ephesians. We're going to point you to this verse. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for it because it's a gift from God. It's a gift. Right? It's a gift. All right? So after church today, as y'all are coming out the door, y'all all are going to give me birthday gifts, right? (laughs) And what happens if I say to you, hey, this is great. Thanks a lot. How much do I owe you for it? You're like, Pastor Brad, it's a gift. Just take it. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, can I come by? Can I, can I do some work for it? Can I do some chores? And you're like, dude, it's a gift. It is a gift. Grace is a gift. You can't earn it. You can't pay for it. All right? It's just a gift. And by the way, what happens when I keep trying to pay you back for this gift? Have I taken the joy of gift giving away from you? Yeah. So why do we do that with God when it comes to grace? Why do we keep trying to earn it? Why do we try, keep trying to pay God back for it? Guys, it's a gift. Right? And, and here's the thing about grace. We all love to sing about it. We love to sing how amazing it is. It's everywhere in the Bible. Seminaries teach it. Preachers try to explain it to everybody. And then we we go out in the world, all of a sudden we hear the word as well. Right? We hear about how grace is out there in the world. We hear things like grace periods. Right? We hear how politicians and entertainers fall from grace is the headline. In music, there's grace notes. And then we say people can be gracious. We talk about how that dancer is graceful. And then there's also this. Before we begin, since this is Aunt Bethany's 80th Christmas, I think she should lead us in the saying of grace. Oh, oh great. Oh. Uh. What, dear? Grace! Grace! She passed away 30 years ago. They want you to say grace. The blessing! For it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, so here's the thing about grace. When we receive it, there's no better feeling in the world. When it's required of us, we have a hard time and it's disturbing for us. Look, grace isn't as nice as it sounds. It's hard. It's hard to give grace when someone hasn't been gracious. But when we apply grace correctly, let me tell you, it will solve just about everything. All right? So, again, 
Here's my definition of grace. Let's say it together. All right. All together now. Uh, next slide. Sorry, Drew. I skipped ahead. Uh, grace is what? The unconditional, undeserved, unearned love of God for sinners with the power to transform lives. Now, if you've been around me for a while, you're like, yep, I've heard that before. Right? We've talked about this. But did you notice something different? I changed it up a little bit. Yeah. I added an extra word because I felt it needed to go in there. Unearned. Grace comes to us unconditionally. We love to put conditions on grace. I'll forgive you, but there's a condition there. Right? I'll love you, but there's a condition there. No conditions on grace when it comes from God. We don't deserve it a lot of times. Be honest with us. Be honest with yourself. We don't deserve it a lot of times. And we can't earn it. It is unearned. Andy Stanley once said, he says, to say someone deserves grace is a contradiction in terms. And he's right. All right? You can no more deserve grace than you can plan your own surprise party. It just doesn't work. Because what happens if you plan your own surprise party? It voids the surprise. Right? And claiming to deserve grace voids the very essence of grace. Because you can ask for it, you can plead for it, but the minute you think you deserve it, the it you think you deserve is no longer grace. Suddenly it's become something that you have earned and grace can't be earned. In other words, we don't get grace. Grace gets us. Remember that. We don't get grace. Grace gets us. Grace chases us down and gets us. Because grace is the opposite of what we deserve. Now, if I had to put a picture to what grace is, I think there's no better way to describe it than in the context of relationship. And what better way to look at that than through the relationship between God and God's people? All right, so that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks. We're going to look at God's story. We're going to look at the story of grace because gr the story of grace starts from the very beginning and goes all the way to the end and still continues even today as we continue to be a part of God's story. And as we look at the story, especially focusing on the Old Testament, what we're going to do is we're going to see that this story includes a broad range of characters. And what we're going to see is that grace started in the very beginning with the first words that God spoke into existence. We're going to see that when God gave the law to God's people, grace was present there as well. Because contrary to what we think, the opposite of grace isn't law. Because we're going to see that grace is actually an extension of that grace. The opposite of grace is simply the absence of grace. All right? Now, we're familiar with the grace in the, in the New Testament. Right? The grace that reached out to a teenager and her fiancé to birth the Savior of the world. 
We're familiar with the grace that would bring sight to the blind, make the lame walk, make the mute talk. We're familiar with the grace that brought Lazarus out of the tomb. We're familiar with the grace that hugged the stink out of a prodigal son. We're familiar with the grace that extended an invitation to an elder brother to come into the feast to celebrate his lost brother. We're familiar with the grace that would invite a death row convict into heaven at the very last moment. We're familiar with the grace that rolled the stone away from a tomb and made the Son of God rise again on the third day. But perhaps, perhaps many of us are less familiar about the grace of the Old Testament. The grace that was in the beginning when God formed the earth, when God started this magnificent plan that God had for the world. Yeah, it didn't begin in just the New Testament. Some of us are unfamiliar with the grace that ended up birthing an entire nation. And that nation, through the blessing that God gave, would be a blessing to all nations. We're unfamiliar with the grace that would chase Jonah down no matter where he went. We're unfamiliar with the grace that would save Rahab. We're unfamiliar with the grace of an older couple by the name of Abraham and Sarah who God gave a promise to. We're unfamiliar with the grace that called into the darkness through the prophet Isaiah that a great light would once again shine on the earth that no darkness would ever be able to overcome. And for many, many of these characters, it was grace that tipped the scale in their favor. And so my hope is that as we start this journey of looking at the God of grace, that you will discover that in some ways their stories are actually your story. Because just like them, all of us need God's grace as well. Always remember, the only prerequisite for grace is knowing you need it. And it is through that lens that we now begin our journey through the Old Testament. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, amen. All right, let's uh, stand and we are going to sing our next song. Watch you. 